are you? I'm doing wonderful. Steve, seriously, you guys are unbelievable. You are doing wonders for all the traders. Well, thanks. We appreciate that. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. And all you wonderful money masters and treasure hunters. Welcome to the February 11th Marvelous Monday edition of today's opening bell on the Trader's Edge. I'm your host, Steve Rhodes, and thanks so much for joining me, folks. Hope you had a, a great weekend out there. And for all of you folks in the uh, Northeast, we'd love to hear some of the Blizzard stories. So you can give us a call at 877-927-6648. We'd love to hear from you. Your presence here today is, uh, folks, it is just something that I, I, something I really, really appreciate, and I treasure it. And my, my outcome, as always, is to help you to become a better money master and to provide you with the tools that each of us need in order to lead an inspired life. Because leading an inspired life, folks, to me, at least, that is what it's all about. So let's go take a look at one of our tools. This is the tool I call, you cannot discover new oceans, folks. You can't discover new oceans until you have the courage to lose sight of the shore. Now, the eagles that live in the canyons of Colorado, they use a special kind of stick with which to build their nest. In fact, a female eagle can fly as many as 200 miles in a single day just to find this one special branch that comes from the ironwood tree. Now, ironwood sticks, folks, they are strong, and just as their name would really suggest, and they have thorns that allow them to lock together so the uh, mother eagle can just go ahead and lock that in and create a very sturdy nest. Now, after building the base of the nest, the female eagle will line it up, line it with all the leaves and feathers and grass, just simply to protect those baby, baby eagles. But as those baby eagles grow, the mother knows that she's got to start making the nest a little bit more uncomfortable. And therefore, she starts removing some of that padding, exposing more of those little thorns you know, that lock the uh, that lock those branches into place. Eventually, the young eagles stand on the edge of that nest. Can't you picture it? They're just standing on that edge of the nest, and the mother knows that she needs to coax them in order to be able to leave that nest. As they begin to plummet to the bottom of the canyon, they wildly flap their wings, and they break their fall and end up doing what the most natural thing in the world for an eagle to do, and that's fly, folks. We... All of us humans, we've got six human needs, and one of those needs is the need for growth. If ever you reach a point of growth stagnation in your life, then change must, change must take place. You, too, need to leave the safety of that nest for the journey into the unknown, folks, and journey into unknown territory that truly is your true nature. You see, you, too, are an eagle. Fly like an eagle, folks. That is your true nature. Well, let's go take a look at these markets here, futures-wise. Dow futures are trading out at 13,932, a little off their session highs. The ES Mini trading at basically flat. It's trading out at 1513. NASDAQ futures up a point and a quarter, point two, point and three quarters out at 2773. King dollar, King dollar up four ticks right now, out at 8035. Gold, we're going to take a look at gold and silver. Gold trading down 15 bucks right now at 1651. Silver out at 3107, down 37 cents. Both those off about a percent or just slightly over a percent. Light sweet crude continuing to pull back out at 9541. Uh, over in uh, Germany, the DAX is off 10 points. The FTSE up 14. Again, our call number is 877 927 6648. Let's go peek at the, the, what has the most movement here in the markets right now is gold and silver. So instead of just starting off with the S&P futures or the uh, or any of the futures contracts, and we'll come back to that, but let's go take a look at what's moving and let's see what we have taking a look at uh, gold. Right now, gold trading out at uh, 1651. What I've got on my screen, if you're just uh, listening to us on your mobile device or on a, a radio station, thanks so much for doing that. Remember, you can always uh, see this show live. It streams live on your smart uh, devices out there. If you go to the homepage of TFNN.com, over on the right-hand side, what you will see is you will see a little button there. It's got three smartphones. Click on that. The show will go ahead and uh, stream live to your smartphone device out there. And as always, this show is archived on Channel 9. The benefit there is you'll be able to take a look at my charts, perhaps follow along. Now, you may not have access to the gold contracts, but you can use the GLD. It's it's similar. Uh, but of course, we're taking a look at gold that's trading, in essence, around the clock out here. So now, as we take a look at gold, we see the A to B equals CD down. Made a one-to-one -one A to B equals CD down. That was coming off of the high on October 5th. That was at the price point of 1798.10. That was your A point. Your B point 
was the low that came in on November 5th out at uh, 1672.50. Makes a retracement. If we take a look at retracements, if we go from our A to our B point just to see what that B to C retracement is, sweet 618. That actual number coming in looks like about 1750 and a little bit change. Gold actually got up to 1755. That's a beautiful thing on an instrument that 17th measured at 1755 to be off by just a few bucks. That is in its range, sweet 618. That is one of those retracement numbers you want to make sure that you know about. If we take a look at uh, gold, then that's your C point. 1 to 1A to B equals CD, 1629. Of course, and I'll blow this up on the screen as gold was hitting that 1629 area. That happened to be it actually got down to a low of 1626, three dollars you got to love how that works. It's down to 1626 on January 4th, and then creates what? Creates the hammer candle. Now what we can see is gold is trading inside that hammer candle. The top of that hammer, 1664.50. Now let's take a look at the retracement off of the bottom of that hammer candle all the way up to the top. That's the red lines now going across the uh, screen. So we'd be going from the low of January 4th, 1626, all the way up to the high on January 17th out at 1697.80. The 0.618 level, which is, excuse me, where gold had moved back to down to the time frame of both uh, January 25th, January 28th, and January 29th, that's 618 level held. Then it moved up. Looked like gold maybe it was forming an A to B equals CD up. Well, that's not the case because what we've had this morning is we've had gold break through that 0.618 level. 0.786 is 1641.40. So far this morning, it's gotten down to 1644 out there. Volume-wise so far, 84,000 contracts. Uh, that is coming into a swing point. That is 162,000 contracts. And into uh, and, and let's take a look at, now let's take a look at the A to B equals CD down that it's setting up here. And what we're going to do is I'm going to go ahead and get rid of the retracement. We know that the level about 1641 is the 0.786 retracement. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this. Now we're going to do two things out here. The first thing is let's take a look at what an A to B equals CD down would look like now in gold. And that's just simply starting at that January 17th high out at 1697. That's your A point. Your B point is the low that was established on January 28th out at 1651. Your C point out here is the high on February 5th. Now, what I'm going to do is the same thing we did at the uh, top out here. Let's go take a look at the retracement here off of the high. Let's take a look at that B to C retracement. So we're going to take a look at the tool from A to B. And what we're going to see is this time here you had gold retrace up to point, this 0.786 level. Looks like it did it right on the uh, dot, right on the dot. you gotta love the, you got to love these Fibonacci numbers, folks. Now, what I'm also going to do, if you've got an A to B equals CD down, that's in essence has completed or is completed. We'll go down and take a look at an intraday chart here as well. And it's coming into this hammer candle. What type of pattern does it look like it's making for you? Looks like to me, it's trying to make here a 0.786, right? We took a look at that 1641 level. That was a 0.786 retracement. Looks to me like it's trying to make a 0.786 Gartley buy pattern. Now, one of the things that you can also line up is you can take a look at what's the expansion of this B to C point. If we take a look at the expansion, this is why you want to make sure you've got an expansion and a retracement rule. Well, we can, ruler, I should say. Well, we can see coming right in at 1641 also is a 1.272 expansion, uh, expansion of your B to C swing point. Basically, what I'm, what I'm communicating to you, what really the stock chart is communicating to me, is we've got several patterns that are completing right around 1641. Why is that important? It's really important as you come into a hammer candle because if a 0.786 retracement refails, more often than not, what it turns into, turns into an eagle, actually turns into a butterfly. But the same kind of concept out there, it'll spread its wings and it'll fly. And that means that it'll take on the hammer low out there. If you want to see what that pattern looks like, all we have to do is to, we'll draw the uh, tool, we'll draw that butterfly pattern right around here at about 1641. We'll just put it right down here. You can see the uh, numbers. I'm going to blow this up on the screen here so that you can take a look at this. We'll get rid of the A to B equals CD down formation tool out here. Maybe you'll see what that butterfly looks like. You can see all that coming together. All kinds of Fibonacci numbers coming together, also coming into what we know is a strong support. We know where the bulls are hanging out in gold. In fact, you can go take a look at charts and you can identify where bulls and bears are. So 16, 39, 40, 41, right around that level is really key. Why? Because if gold breaks that area, the first test is going to be that hammer candle. If it breaks, 1626, folks, if you are long, you know how the rhyme goes.
You break a hammer if you are long, you are wrong out there. Where would be the next level of gold? Well, that becomes pretty easy to figure out. We're going to take our retracement. We're going to go all the way down to the low on June 16th, out at 1526. And we're going to take it all the way up to the high that was put in on October 5th. We can see that right there at the bottom of the hammer on the longer term basis, that is sweet 618. That says the next level down on gold, if, only if, it breaks that hammer candle, is going to be in that 1584 range. That is the point seven eight six retracement of the move off of the low all the way up to the top. What we can see about gold, it is not oversold just yet. So as it moves lower, because we've got the king on the rise out here, that is going to put pressure on gold. I suspect what we will see is we will see this point seven eight six Gartley pattern fail, and we will get a test of that hammer candle. But let's go take a look at the 30-minute chart, because I haven't done it. Actually, just uh, I was just really doing all of this on the uh, fly out here, and let's go re let's go refresh my screen. Looks like on the 30-minute chart, as we take a look at gold getting into the oversold territory, the extreme oversold territory. No bullish candle yet. The bulls have not shown up. When we take a look at uh, gold out here, and if it uh, breaks down below the level of uh, 1644, to me that spells trouble meaning that you will see on the daily basis gold go down and test the bottom of that hammer candle. Let's go take a look at silver, high-ho silver out here. Silver trading down uh, 41 cents. That's off 1 and 3 tenths percent. Now, in the case of silver, silver stronger than gold if we measure it based on swing points. And what I mean by that is if you take a look at the swing point from January 28th, 42,000 contracts, that level has already been broken in gold. In the case of silver, it's just trading into that swing point. It's trading into that swing point so far, about 15, 16,000 contracts thus far this morning. The first level of uh, gold, in fact, silver here almost looks more like it's consolidating just at this point. I do suspect, though, silver will go ahead and take gold's lead. That says that silver could come down and test the high of January 4th out there. That swing point low is or the swing point high on that swing point of January 4th is $30 and 30 cents out there. But first it'll have to break the January 28th low $30 and 74 cents. Our call in number is always 877-927-6648. When we get back from our first break, we're going to go peek in on the daily contract for the ES mini. What we do know is that on Friday, regardless of volume, a resistance area was taken out. Hmm, something to think about. 877-927-6648. We'll be right back. What type of investor are you? Conservative, moderate, or aggressive? No matter your investor personality, your overall portfolio should reflect your financial goals, time horizon, and your risk tolerance. Help ensure your portfolio is appropriately invested with an asset allocation plan from Morgan Stanley Wealth Management. Simply picking the right stocks is not enough. Research has shown that choosing the right proportions of stocks, bonds, and cash is essential to the success of your long-term investments. Morgan Stanley believes a carefully selected portfolio can lower volatility and increase investment return potential. Find out about what an asset allocation and a Morgan Stanley Wealth Management financial advisor can do for you. Call Angela O'Brien, first vice president and financial planner of the Clearwater, Florida branch at 727-441-6108 today to discuss your personal financial needs. Asset allocation does not assure a profit or protect against loss in declining financial markets. Investments and services are offered through Morgan Stanley Wealth Management, LLC. Member SIPC. With the launch of Tiger TV, TFNN has brought our programming to the next level. With Tiger TV, you can gain access to each host's charts and computer screens as they host their daily stock program. Whether it's Tom O'Brien, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Ken Shreve, David White, Larry Pesavento, Victor Jones, or Daryl Martin, you can catch all of our technicians hosting their programs live and archived on Tiger TV for your viewing pleasure 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. If you haven't checked out Tiger TV, then visit TFNN.com and see what you're missing. 
McEwen Mining is a high-growth, mid-tier producer in the Americas with a market capitalization of $1 billion. Experienced mining executive Rob McEwen, as chairman, CEO, and president, owns 25% of the outstanding shares of McEwen Mining and has put in place an ambitious business plan with the goal of qualifying for inclusion in the S&P 500 by 2015. With $70 million in cash and liquid assets as of the end of 2012 and completely debt-free, McEwen Mining is poised for growth. Production in 2013 is forecasted to grow at 24%, reaching 130,000 gold equivalent ounces. And over the next three years, McEwen Mining projects that their production will increase to 290,000 gold equivalent ounces, almost a three-fold increase from last year's totals. If you'd like to find out more about McEwen Mining, click on their banner on the front page of TFNN.com or check them out on the NYSE or TSX under the symbol MUX. Are you looking for a precision edge in the market, something that can stack the odds in your favor? Then look into Larry Pesavento's new trading newsletter, Patterns, Profits, and Peace of Mind. In each weekly issue, Larry explains what's going to happen in the markets based on the pattern he sees developing and gives you actionable trade ideas based on those patterns. Plus, you'll get his detailed analysis on a variety of markets and sectors, including stocks, treasury bonds, the gold market, oil, the dollar, the forex market, and more. And you'll get the Technical Corner segment, which is a short but powerful weekly training session on trading. You'll get access to all the patterns Larry is seeing in the markets, plus the Astro Harmonics and powerful Bradley stock market model that Larry utilizes for less than $5 a day. An extremely potent combination that will give you just the edge you've been looking for. Try patterns, profits, and peace of mind absolutely free for two weeks. Go to TFNN.com and click on the free trial link at the top of the page. That's an $85 value, yours free when you register right now. Get Larry's patterns, profits, and peace of mind and get the edge you've been looking for. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, and a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by TFNN. Test drive all the newsletters for free at TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks, in the uh, pre-market here. Uh, Apple uh, closed out at 475, 474.98, trading out at 476.30. We know Apple is inside the uh, gap. You've got Wendy's company. W-E-N is the uh, ticker symbol. Uh, looks a little like uh, a little juicy out there. Actually, they closed at 508, trading at 518. Uh, no big uh, shakes out there. Norvo Nordisk, N-V-O, the ticker symbol. They closed at 192. They're getting a little haircut this morning. Trading out at 167.20 gold, obviously down. So the GLD is trading off. Also, the uh, the velocity shares. Let's see, what else, what else do we have out here? Radian Group, RDN is the ticker symbol. Closed at 672. They're taking a little haircut down to 622 as we speak. Let's come back and take a look at the uh, daily chart of the uh, S&P futures contract. We're looking at the ES mini now. If you're watching us on uh, Tiger TV, you can see the 1.272 butterfly that completed coming into a jobs Friday. That was not this past Friday. That was the Friday before. Had a, a strong close that day on February 1st. That high out there, 151050. And if we take a look at the very following session out here, what we can see is that is a uh, bearish engulfing candle. Bear sash, bearish engulfing candle on February 4th. That really set up the high then. And that's where you really, in my case here, should take a look at my charts. That's where the body of this, uh, the body of this trading session, uh, February 4th, engulfed the entire prior session. In fact, it engulfed a little bit more than that. It engulfed the prior two sessions out there. That sets up a uh, resistance area, that being the high of 151050. What we had take place on Friday, albeit on light volume, doesn't matter, was a close above that level. And that's very important because it's a 1.272 butterfly uh, from a, a bullish and or bearish side. Just simply reading the message of the market, this is a little bit of a wild card here. Uh, this is the canary, one of the canaries in the uh, coal mine, so to speak. 
If we do take a look at the, and, and you had light volume, of course, because of the uh, snowstorm. Well, who knows why it was, but certainly the snowstorm certainly impacted the uh, low volume trading session that we saw on Friday. And from a uh, bullish standpoint, you want to see it stay above that level. You don't want to see it be a false break top side, which means uh, that uh, it would you would see a close today below the 15, 10, 50 uh, level. If you get back inside the bottom part of the range, that's all it was, was a false break to the upside. If it stays above it, or better yet, from a bullish standpoint, you actually want to see uh, the ES mini get down to a level at a 15, we'll call it 15, 10 and a quarter, the highest 15, 10, 50 from February 1st. Reject that area today. That's what you would be looking at from both a bullish and a bearish side out here. If it's bullish, what you will see is you will see a run to the 1.618 expansion of the September 14th swing point high down to the November 16th swing point low out here. That level is right around 1548. I believe if we go take a look at the monthly chart, what we will see is the 1548 range is also the bottom of the swing point high going back to March of 2000 out there. So very well could be that that is where the ES Mini is headed to. But you do have a line of resistance that was broken out there. Old resistance becomes what? Or should become. That's right. Should become new support out here. Now that's the daily. Now let's go peek in. We'll go look at the, and you can see it is it has worked off a little bit of the over uh, bought condition just simply by moving sideways all of last week. It's below the uh, 70 line. In fact, if we take a look at it right now, it's at 65, 69. So from a relative strength standpoint, certainly should have the uh, strength to stay above that. That's why today is an important trading session. Now let's take a look at the 30-minute chart. What do we see on the 30-minute chart? You can see here, and it's why I have a, a free report on the homepage of TFNN.com, uh, folks. It is called Reading the Message of the Markets. It's an extraordinary set of indicators. Uh, and uh, go to the homepage of TFNN.com and Download that free special report. I want to be able to teach you how to add this to your trading arsenal. And you'll want to. I'm going to be doing, I'm hosting a, a one-hour workshop, not uh, not uh, this Wednesday, but the following Wednesday on the 20th of February out there. And that's something you will absolutely want to uh, sign up for. There won't be more information. Uh, well, you can go to the homepage of TFNN.com. And if you click on, and you, you, if you download the uh, special report, it has all the information with regard to that workshop that I'll be conducting. However, if you do come back, we take a look at the ES Mini. We're looking at the 30-minute chart here. You can see, you know, you want to learn how to be able to buy. You want to be able to spot buying opportunities when you've got the relative weakness. We call it the relative strength indicator, but it's, we want to buy weakness and sell strength. In this case here, you're looking for this to get down into that 30-ish range and wait for the bulls to show up. Last time we saw that was back out here at about 12 noon on February the 7th out here. Of course, what we can see is coming into Friday's session really right about 11 o'clock, and then it moves sideways. Once you get up into that extreme level, in order to work off an overbought condition, just simply has to move sideways. What happened while we were getting up this morning right at about 5 a.m.? Well, you had that relative strength indicator get up into that 70 level. A couple of bears showed up in the 8.30 and 9 o'clock time frame. 877-927-6648. More room to run to the downside. We'll be right back. Has the current market volatility continued to stop you out of trades when the market spikes against you? Now is the perfect time to open up an account with Nadex. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a brand new, completely regulated Chicago-based exchange, and unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their completely free trading platform, which also features real-time charts and full customization capability. One of the advantages of trading with Nadex in volatile markets is that your risk is always capped and you have the ability of keeping your trades open even when the market spikes against you. Nadex is completely completely brand new with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com. Or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. 
Just recently, on December 28th, Market Insight subscribers were advised to go along the QQQ, the NASDAQ 100 ETF, on December 28th at 63.91. And only two trading days later, after a huge jump in the markets, Market Insight subscribers were advised to sell the QQQ at 66.64 for a $2.73 or 4.27% profit to start off 2013. At the same time, Tom O'Brien had advised his clients looking for a more leveraged trade that they could have initiated a position in the QLD, the ProShares Ultra QQQ ETF, and over the same two trading days, Market Insight subscribers were able to lock in a $4.48 profit or an 8.47% gain in just one trade. Get your two-week free trial to Market Insights today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during your free trial and pay nothing. Don't miss out on the next great trading opportunity in 2013. Act today. If you're an investor looking for a great weekly investment newsletter, then now is the perfect time to try out Ken Shreve's Ultimate Growth Stocks. Every Tuesday, Ken breaks down multiple sectors in his weekly newsletter, Ultimate Growth Stocks, with a full in-depth report including specific trading recommendations within his model portfolio, charts, sector analysis, upcoming economic data, along with intraweek trading updates on newsletter positions whenever the market dictates. Right now, you can receive a full month, that's 30 days, to evaluate Ken's newsletter free of charge to see if it fits your trading plan. At less than $75 per month, Ken provides you with his expert trading advice that can pay for itself in no time. Take advantage of this great offer by signing up for a 30-day free trial to Ken Shreve's Ultimate Growth Stocks today. Don't let this offer pass you by. Visit the front page of TFNN.com and sign up now. Daryl Martin coined the phrase diagnostic trading and we're happy to announce that his diagnostic box spread analyzer has finally been released. The diagnostic box spread analyzer helps you easily identify the best box spreads on Nadex in seconds, plus you receive access to the diagnostic deviation levels as well as step-by-step -step training videos teaching you how to trade Nadex spreads so you can quickly master the mechanics of this simple yet powerful trading instrument. By pulling live data from the Nadex Exchange, the Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer does all the math for you, calculating risk, reward potential, distance to break even for both outright spreads and spreads used to hedge the underlying market. Visit the front page of TFNN.com today to get your two-week free trial to Daryl Martin's Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer and gain access to the valuable information it can provide when trading the Nadex Box Spreads. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. To the races. We got the Dow trading down 24 points right now. S&P off two. Composite down about uh, about one. Uh, Russell 2000 slow out of the gates, only off 28 cents right now. Microsoft up 13 ticks. Intel flat. You've got Google off six dollars and change. Cisco up 13 cents. Apple trading out 477 and change, up two dollars and fifty cents right now. Uh, X. O-N-E, X-Own Company. I believe that was one of uh, David's uh, picks in the uh, technology report. I see X-1 blocks all over the uh, place inside the uh, studio. So that had to be uh, gifts left by uh, David. That is up, uh, that's the leader. Well, it's almost leader in the clubhouse. Up, well, it is leader. Up $2.70. That's up 9% this morning. That was an IPO from uh, early or the middle of last week. You've got uh, LinkedIn, L-N-K-D. That is uh, show on. Oh, I don't have it handy. Uh, you've got uh, LinkedIn up two dollars and seventy cents. Uh, AOL up a buck sixty. Uh, Sony, uh, uh, Sanofi. I'm sorry, S N Y, 
SNY Santa Fe there up a buck fifty five. Sony's SNE Tesoro Corp T to Corp uh, up a buck. Uh, to the downside though, Norvo Nordis. That's what we're taking a look at first here on Tiger TV. If you are paying attention to the, if you're looking at the uh, charts here, that is gap down with volume this morning, and that's why you want to make sure that no matter what equity it is that you uh, trade, just make sure that you are able to pop open a chart and see where the volume is and why. Because when something falls out of bed, if it does fall out of bed, it's going to come back to that high volume bar. If we take a look at Novo Nordis, the uh, ticker symbol there is N. And VO right now trading out at 167.31, already down with 423,000 shares out here. Made a high with 618,000 shares on February the 6th last week out there. Why do you want to know where volume is? Well, if you take a look at the last uh, volume bars out here, you have a uh, you have a uh, some volume off of the top here. This is back in October, October 25th of 2012. You saw some institutional selling 1.6 million shares to the downside. The top of that bar is a 168.74. The bottom is 156.68. You're trading at 167.98 right now. You can, if you take a look at the next volume bar that is out here, well, it's got volume to the downside that hasn't been tested with lighter volume. That's where I suspect this is headed to. And that is the November 6 low out there at about the 144.52 change. It did 2.7 million shares down there. It had a nice candle, very powerful candle on November the 8th. That high is 161. It could be 161, holds it in place, but more likely you'll see the bullish, most bullish case would be for this to actually come back, lighten up on a volume standpoint and move down into the 144.52. Of course, I say most bullish. You've got this gap out here and it's going to be a huge gap with volume. That means that that's setting up a very strong resistance level, which will be the high of today's trading session, whatever that turns out to be. You can see here, you know, this equity, always great to be able to buy this equity or anything else when it is down towards the relative weakness area. Uh, we see that that was the case back in early June, just as it was right back here in that November 6th time frame out there. Of course, you've got to be careful once any equity starts getting into the overbought condition. In this case here, it stayed into the extreme level and it did it for quite some period of time. It's very important that you understand how to be able to identify bullish and bearish candles, though, because that is all about reading the message of the markets. Because the bulls and the bears, they just simply can't hide. They simply form candle patterns and configurations. Some have more importance than others out there. Some actually act as support and resistance areas. Some are nothing more than pause buttons. Some are just kind of a nice thing to look at. But they uh, just simply don't have any meaning when it comes to being able to read the message of the markets. That's one of the things that I want to be able to teach you how to do. That is on Novo Nordis. Uh, speaking of uh, gaps, let's go take a look at Apple. Uh, because it is going to be all about Apple or watching Apple and seeing what Apple does here. You can see Apple had closed into the uh, gap. Let's go ahead and erase some of the lines out here on my chart. We'll just simply draw new lines in here. As we take a look at Apple, the very first thing, what did it do? You know, we had Apple that gapped down. That was on January 24th. We'll draw that. We'll put a red line across here. That was the first area of resistance on any gap. What you're looking at as a first area of resistance is going to, and this is a gap down, I should say. So what you're looking for on a gap down, the first area of resistance is going to be the high of the gap down candle. That's the January 24th level. That is the level of 465.73. Now, in the case of Apple, came back up and tested it on, December, on February 6th. If you were listening on the show, the following uh, trading session, even that trading session, I believe we had a caller, uh, maybe it was Mark from New England, or somebody was calling about Apple uh, out there. We did have a rejection of, a, of that resistance area, and it was also rejection on price and volume, only 21 million shares. That trading session, it got up above uh, the uh, swing point uh, downdraft day, the gap down day from January 24th out there. Again, that high was 465.73. It got up to 466.50, closed back below it. That was your first area of that test. Uh, uh, that, that was the first test of that area. How about that? We'll get the, we'll get my grammar right here. And what you want to be able to do is the, you want to understand those gap ups and gaps down. And what you're looking for is you're looking for at least three tests. If you get three tests of that area, it's either going to set up a strong area of support or resistance. In this case here would have been an area of resistance, isn't it? It's always an area of resistance. It's just a stronger area when you have multiple tests. In the case of Apple, only one test. The following trading session, regardless of volume, we also know that Apple, while it was down here, it was in that over 
uh, sold condition has to work its way off. That's really what it's, that's all that it's doing. Just a little counter trend rally out here. We take a look at Apple. There's a couple other lines that we'll draw in on the uh, chart. Now that it's inside the gap, the question is, where will it trade to? I absolutely have no idea. No idea. I know that while it's in the gap, I can give you ideas of where it may trade to, but it can stop at any point in time. You're in this gap on lighter volume. Will the gap get filled? It might. It might not get filled. Well, Steve, all gaps get filled. Well, eventually they may get filled. But if you take a look at the uh, gap out here, the most, uh, the one before this, we can go back to January 11th. I'm going to draw the. We'll put this in red as well. So if we take a look at uh, this gap down, this was on January 11th. Apple then gaps down. The next trading session does it with 26 million shares. You can see that area was tested twice. Actually, it was. Let's see. Let's count the number of times that this area was tested here. This line we're going to draw across. We're going to put this one in black out here. So this was tested on the uh, trading session of January 16th, 24 million shares coming into 26. Then you had it tested on the 17th, uh, 16 million shares. Uh, that was rejected. Let's see, if on the 22nd, did we get our third test here? Uh, 507.88, and the top was 507.50. So we did get a third test out here. Should have been a strong area of resistance. What happens at next trading session? It closes up above it. That should have acted. Once it gets above that level, that should have acted as support. It didn't. That is because you had a gap down that very next day. You can see that gap wasn't closed. Are we going to see the same thing out here? The gap down where Apple could be traveling to. This is what the bulls are praying for, what they're hoping for right now. And that is that Apple pushes its way up into the 504.77 range. Does it have to get up there? No. The last time up there it didn't. Is Apple going to be a sell signal? Absolutely, there's going to be a sell signal out here. If we come over to the left-hand side of the chart and we take a look at that November 16th date, an important day out there because that was our hammer low. We'll go ahead and put this one in. I don't know. What are we going to put this one in? Let's put this one in black as well. We can see that black line, which, uh, you know, is a, used to be an area of support. Now that is also a strong area of resistance out there. I don't suspect that we will see, Apple may get up there and test that level, but that would be it. And then if you see a bearish candle, that would be your sell signal in Apple. Does it have to get all the way up there? Absolutely not. It doesn't, but it's inside that gap. And you're going to want to be paying attention, at least I'm going to want to be paying attention to Apple and watch how this trades here, because this will be one of the tells in the uh, marketplace. Uh, if we go take a look out, see what else we have uh, popping and dropping out here. Uh, we've got... Uh We've got Google to the downside, so let's go see what Google is uh, doing. Ticker G-O-O-G -O -O -G out there. Uh, Google out here on Friday making a high, gapping up. It did not gap down this morning. Let's see, the high of the session from February 7th, 778.81. Uh, the low, 779.56 on Friday. Let's see, has this gotten down? In? It's gotten down to 777.65. Seven. So it has it has already filled that gap. No chance for a island reversal on uh, Google out there. If we do take a look at Google, what is it likely to do once it begins its retracement? Well, first of all, you're going to want to see Google get back down below. Let's take a look out here. Where is that? Okay, you'd want to see Google get into the lower part of its range. That would be back below the October 5th swing point out here. That high is 774 38. It's trading above that now. If it gets back below that level, we will have had a, a false break topside. That sets up a test of the uh, gap candle from January 23rd. The low of that candle is 735.79. That is where Google would release some information to us. Uh, let's go take a look at... Uh, Let's go take a look at AOL. That's having a nice pop. That's up 5% here this morning. So let's go take a look at that chart. AOL is the uh, ticker symbol. Had a gap up, nice gap up on uh, Friday. Of course, all this is doing now is running into a resistance area. So we're talking about gaps. Looks like, you know, there's gaps across the board. So as we pull up charts out here over the course of the next couple months, we're going to be looking at a lot of those gap areas. Uh, you've got AOL. Where is that? Now, AOL has a high volume high. So this is kind of an interesting uh, stock chart out here. Let me refresh my screen. That is interesting, isn't it? It may not be interesting to you, but it's interesting to me. You've got AOL has a high volume high that has not been tested. That was from the November 6th time period, 10 million shares to the upside. Now, if, in fact, uh, AOL can go ahead and close this open window, and that would be the, uh, that means getting and closing 
uh, into the November 30th swing point. That's the gap down. The price point you're looking at is 36.96. You'd like to see it close inside there. Closes inside there. Uh, this and it can break above the uh, 37, 38.02 level. Uh, you'll see AOL make a run for that swing point high, which is 43.93 out here. But the, your first piece of information is going to is this going to be in a consolidation? And the consolidation would be right from the uh, bottom of the gap from November 30th uh, all the way down to, uh, I would say, the uh, January 2nd level, right around $29.25 out there, and that is on AOL. Uh, let's go peek in on uh, bonds. Let's go see what bonds are doing. Bonds are uh, getting ready to uh, move topside, and what I mean by that is they want to come back up and test an old resistance level. That resistance level, where else but a, a gap. If we take a look at the uh, gap, that is the January 2nd high out there. That is at 146.100. That is the upper range. That is contained bonds. That is where bonds want to uh, travel to. They are off the bottom. Uh, they are, you know, working off that oversold condition out here. But uh, bonds want to make a run to at least that area out here. Uh, and if we go take a look at natural gas, uh, natural gas, this, this is pulling back here to at least the 0.786 level. That would be $3.17. Right now, it is trading out, or the low of today, $3.20. But I suspect what we will see is we will see uh, natural gas move down back towards the bottom of this new downtrend channel that that gas is trading into. Also is a A to B equals CD pattern that would take you down towards the bottom of that uh, price channel out there. With the, uh, you know, with the winter storm uh, out there in the Northeast, and I hope everybody that is listening, hope that, or if you've got friends, family uh, that uh, made it through the uh, storm, I hope that everything was good out there, uh, that they know that there are some folks that are without power, so that could not be a comforting feeling. I did see some of the uh, news reports, uh, at least for those folks along the coast, with that water rushing in. That did not look uh, very good out there. But natural gas, if it was going to have a uh, move, you would think that it would have had a move on Friday as that storm was, as people were preparing for that storm, as well as today. Natural gas continues with its weakness out here. Light sweet crude, if we take a look at light sweet crude, light sweet crude wants to at least pull back to the 0.382 level, but more likely right around $89 and change. You can see light sweet crude also it had gotten into that uh, overbought condition. It finally gave way, gave us a bearish uh, candle here on January 31st that got taken back the session, the following session. However, we got the next bearish candle on February 4th, and that has remained bearish. Now we're seeing this blue line. That was the Basil Chapman walk of the nine period EMA. Now that level is acting as a resistance level. And so we will see light sweet crude continue to pull back, especially as the U.S. dollar index moves higher. Currencies, we didn't talk about any currencies out there. So let's go peek in on some currencies. How about the euro? If we take a look at the euro, you'll see a nice 1 to 1.618. A to B equals CD pattern. That was completed on February 1st. Moved just a tad higher. Now we're seeing the euro pull back. And just like on any uh, elevator out there, once you hit one floor and you start going down to the next floor, well, in the case of Fibonacci terms, the next floor down is sweet 618. The uh, euro kind of came through, not kind of, it came through the uh, 0.382 level, uh, slicing through it like carry gold butter out there, closing below it, continuing to stay below it, 0.618 is the next spot. That's right around the 132. It looks like about 132.8. My uh, glasses can't totally magnify. I'm pretty far away from the uh, chart, so I can't see that. But right around that level is where the uh, euro is headed to. It's also working off. It's over a uh, bought uh, condition. I think the next time you want to take a look at buying the euro is going to be as it moves down towards the bottom of that relative strength indicator, down towards that. 30 level. That is on the euro. Let's go take a look at the yen. It's having a little counter trend rally this morning. Let's look at the 30 minute chart on the yen. Looks like we're going to have to look at the 30 minute chart on the yen when we come right back. This had formed a 0.618 currently sell pattern. 877-927-6648. Dow's off 37. S&P's off 3. We'll be right back. You take a hands-on approach to managing your investment strategy. You're always looking for the next trading opportunity to magnify your perspective. 
Direction Shares connects sophisticated traders with a powerful array of ETFs from a wide range of asset classes. The markets may go up and down, and you want tools for both sides of the trade. Discover how we can help at DirectionShares.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction Shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction Shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction Shares at 800-851-0511. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors employing dynamic strategies. Investors in the fund should understand the consequences of seeking daily investment results, understand the risk of shorting and intend to actively monitor and manage their investments. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long Long term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light speed world of ever evolving high tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Recently, Basil Chapman has had some outstanding trades in his newsletter, The Opening Call. Each morning by 9 a.m., Basil uploads his newsletter to the TFNN servers so that his subscribers can access his expert trading advice. Basil gives his take on the direction of key indices and updates any active trades that his subscribers are currently in. Just recently, Basil subscribers closed out a short position in Chipotle Mexican Grill, CMG, for more than an $86 profit per share, over a 20% gain in just one position. If you'd like to try out Basil Chapman's newsletter, The Opening Call, then visit the front page at TFNN.com and click Trading Newsletters. There you'll find Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, where you can request a free sample copy. Also, don't miss Basil's program. The Tiger Technician's Hour, Monday through Friday, 11 a.m. Eastern, on TFNN. Tom O'Brien's weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, has helped subscribers for over 10 years navigate the high-risk world of exploring and producing gold companies. And now's a great time to sign up for a free month-long trial to see the kind of insight that Tom delivers for his subscribers on a weekly basis. Every Monday, Tom O'Brien issues a quick update on the metal market, giving you his take on the HUI, XAU, GLD, dollar bonds, and much more. Tom follows Monday's update with a full gold report, which is delivered to subscribers Tuesday afternoon with detailed coverage of 24 separate gold or metal stocks, as well as another 10 to 15 stocks that he lets you know are on his potential watch list. Get your month-long free trial to the Gold Report today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Don't spend another year navigating the metal markets on your own. Act early in 2013 and make the most of your gold and metal market investments. Catch the Money Masters as they teach you the art of mastering money when it comes to trading and investing. Next on TFNN. Welcome back, folks. The Dow trading down 35 points right now out of 13,957. S&P off a couple. Composite down uh, six. Small caps off uh, one and a half. The NDX 100 here. NDX 100 is off five points. New York Stock Exchange actually leading things to the downside. Hmm. 
Something to think about. New York Stock Exchange off 22 points right now. The King, King Dollar up uh, 15 ticks. But let's take a look at uh, what is leading things down inside the uh, Dow here. You've got IBM leading the uh, charge down. Of course, that's number one waiting inside the uh, Dow. That's off 84 cents right now, trading out at 200.84. You know, I haven't looked at the uh, at uh, IBM here for a uh, bit, but uh, this has created an island of reversal top here. How about that, folks? Take a look at the IBM. Now, IBM had to gapped up with conviction, gapped up, no question that the uh, move behind the January 23rd gap had 12.5 million shares. Of course, that was really going into a gap down with uh, 12 million shares. So you absolutely had conviction, right? 12 million shares, 12.6 million on the way down and a 12.5 million on the way up. So kind of a a top, uh, yeah, 12.5 on the way up. Kind of a little bit of a toss here. But what IBM did was certainly moved up, gapped up, got into an overbought uh, condition, but it created this little island out here. And the island, if we take a look at it, the uh, bottom of the island is the price point of 20251 and the high so far, 20209. This was from Friday's trading session and trading lower today. So you got this little island reversal. Uh, you should see IBM now start to move down and at least come back and test the uh, gap up level. That would be the January 22nd candle right around 196.08. Uh, IBM, even after that day of strength on January 23rd, really closing above the uh, trading session of October 17th that should have had the energy to at least go back and uh, fill that gap where it gapped down from on the October 16th candle, but did not have the energy to do that. Uh, so this will be an important uh, stock to watch as well. That is on IBM. Number two to the downside here, looks like it's Walmart. Uh, they're down about 57 cents. United Technologies off about the uh, same. Uh, Home Depot off 41 pennies to the upside is McDonald's. So let's go take a look at the McDonald's chart. That is uh, leading the charge to the upside here. So let's go see what that chart pattern uh, tells us. MCD is the uh, ticker symbol out here. So let's go look at the uh, golden arches. The golden arches here had gotten up above a uh, level of resistance. That level of resistance, that's the black horizontal line going across my uh, screen out here. That really was right around the highs of, we call about $94 even. Steven, uh, what uh, what uh, that may end up old resistance becomes what becomes new support. So as uh, the market pulls back, as McDonald's, even though it's up 18 cents today, it's come back once and test that area. We'll see if it continues to test and if that holds as a support level now for McDonald's out here. McDonald's looks like it also either is or has completed an A to B equals CD up. Uh, it did do that. It made the 1 to 1.272 A to B equals CD up, and that was on February the 1st out there. That was Jobs Friday. That was on McDonald's Corp. Let's go take a look at uh, Disney. I have not looked at Disney here for a while. D-I-S is the uh, ticker symbol. Uh, Disney out here, last type of time it had a sign of strength was a few trading sessions ago, but it sold off. That was on February the 6th out there. I suspect that high will be tested. That is at 55 50 out here right now, trading at 54.77. As it moves up there, looks like it's going to test Disney, test that Disney high on lighter volume, but still not a bad looking stock chart out there at all. The biggest weakness is, is that if this falls out of bed, it'll come back to the November 9th area down in the $47 and change range. Folks, stay tuned. The Money Masters show will be up next. And then following the Money Masters, it is Marvelous Monday. That's Basil Chapman from 11 to 12, Larry Pesavento, 12 to 1, Daryl Martin from 1 to 2, David White, 2 to 3, Ken Shreve, 3 to 4, and the Tom O'Brien show from 4 to 6. Drop to start your Monday. Have a fantastic day, folks. Look forward to seeing you soon.